and uh, there will be some theory in it, and which, uh, which will be it was sort of packaged at the beginning, but there will also be a lot of images. So do not despair if, if you see a bunch of words on the screen at the beginning, and, and I'm talking a little bit uh, about the, the theoretical aspects of art, um, because the images are coming soon after that, and, and uh, so just relax and stay in your seat, and, and it'll all work out, hopefully. So um, you notice, but first you notice that, the, and I did this purposely, the outside the box is inside a box, right? Uh, so the parentheses are a form of a box, and I wanted that, it, the impossibility of the outside of the box to be part of, of what I'm saying. The, the impossibility, but the ideal, the hope, the, uh, the, the goal, that, that thinking can actually be outside of the box, uh, but the, uh, uh, the, the reality of that as well, the, 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 uh, the challenge uh, which we constantly are hitting our heads against. So I thought that this would be an interesting image to start with. It's by Alan Capro and it's from the Happening Movement during the 1960s in, in the United States. And, uh, uh, so it says, if you can't read it from the back, during three days, about 20 rectangular enclosures of ice blocks, measuring about 30 feet long, 10 wide, and 8 high, are built throughout the city. Their walls are unbroken, and they are left to melt. Okay, I thought this was a good image because it's about melting the box. And, and, uh, and that possibility of melting that parenthesis. Um, the, and, the, and also it has to do with materiality because this is what I'm gonna be saying about art, that art is a interaction of, of material practices, technic, of material practices and knowledge. So the combination of material practices, concrete practices, uh, relationship to, to this stuff, to, the, to this stuff, is um, how artists engage with the problematic of thinking outside of the box. That is the methodology that artists tend to use in order to reach out beyond the parenthesis of the box. Um, I also want to just say something at the very beginning about vision, and uh, I'm not sure if, you, if you're familiar with the Pleiades. Um, it's a star constella constellation, um, and, and uh, the Pleiades are very, very, very faint in the sky. Have, have anyone familiar with the Pleiades? Pleiades? Okay, there may be other, other names for the Pleiades as well. Uh, anyway, the, the Pleiades are very, very faint, and the only way to actually see the individual stars is not to look directly at them, but to look next to them, to use your, your rods, which are uh, more on the periphery of your, of your visual array, rather than using your fovea or, or your macula. To, so you're not using your high focus point because your high focus point demands light. And I'm gonna be turning off the lights in a few minutes when we get to the images. But, but uh, and the, um, uh, it's a reminder to me. Uh, but the, the fovea is, is looking at uh, uh, high, so the, the rods do not see color, but the rods are very good in low light. So if you've ever been out in the countryside when the sun is going down, and gradually the color is disappearing from, from the environment. What's happening, actually, is a change of vision. You are, you, you are no longer using your cones, which are in the fovea, but you are beginning to use your rods, which are, are, are seeing in low light. So that shift is a very, very fascinating kind of shift, and walk, you know, take the opportunity sometime to watch it. When you go home, don't turn on the lights. Wait. Uh, one, one, of the, uh, one of the things about rods is it takes a few hours for your rods to completely uh, wake up to low light situation and, 
And if you turn on a light, then back, you're basically back to cones, and then you have to kind of start the process over again. But you, you actually have very, we have very good uh, vision at, at night, but we hardly ever use it because we're in lighted environments in the city, those of us who live in the city. Okay, but anyway, the idea with the Pleiades is you look next to it and you see it. And I'm suggesting that there's something to do that that kind of peripheral vision, that looking next to, looking askance, looking awry, looking not directly at, not, not the, the, the uh, gaze at something, but the glance at something actually is an appropriate kind of vision for, and I'm, I'm saying this in a metaphorical way too, a kind of conceptual vision for looking at art. All right, that it's not necessarily something you look directly at, it's something you encounter at the periphery, the periphery of consciousness and the periphery of knowledge, okay? It's something at the horizon. Now the other thing that, that art uses is metaphor, and so I just thought I'd just introduce the word. Um, now metaphor is basically when one thing stands in for something else. So, uh, you know, a, a 